Hello, hello! Welcome to another episode of History in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons, my British Rail Critics, and of course, my Underwater Train Finders. You are the reason why this content remains rather clever. I mean, not really. It's it's just me doing the same thing I do every time. But the topic today is really clever, interesting enough that I really had to talk about it because someone in the Discord server brought it up and I was like, that sounds hysterical. And today we are going to be discussing the French nationalized railway system. That's right. Specifically, their workers who at one point did, well, it was sort of a strike, but like the opposite. It's, um, well, let me explain. This is the story of how French railway workers outsmarted their bosses. Welcome to the proud nation of France, where I will be trying to avoid saying any words in their language because I mispronounce them every single time. France decided to nationalize their railways a bit sooner than most. The UK, obviously, wouldn't actually do it till 1949. We in America still kind of haven't really done that, at least when it comes to freight service. We do have Amtrak for our passenger service, though. But France did it all the way back in 1938. The lines were struggling due to competition from automobiles, and the fact that they were coming out of the Great Depression, which affected the whole world. The new government-run company was, and still is, known as SNCF, which stands for something that I absolutely am not even going to attempt to say. There's no way. You can't make me do that. I cannot say that. I am going to butcher it. I know I'm going to butcher it. That's just not. That's what it stands for. But everyone just says SNCF. I will tell you, though, that it translates into English as National Society of French Railroads. Now, SNCF has done a lot of great things over the years, including the legendary TGV, France's take on a high-speed rail network. Like many European nations, France is pretty dependent on rail travel in order to get around. However, there was a time when they didn't exactly treat their workers the best. And in fact, based on my recent research that I had to dig through in order to get to this actual story, apparently they uh, still don't do that because the workers have been striking like every other year. Or every other month, it depends what year we're talking about. The last decade is apparently really rough with their rail lines and their workers threatening to strike. I have no idea what they're doing. But I live in America, and it's none of my business. What is my business is history. And there was a time when they couldn't even threaten to strike. They couldn't actually strike. They literally weren't allowed to. It was forbidden. Due to some legal jargon, workers under the new National Railway, SNCF, back in the day, were not permitted to strike, or unionize for that matter. Now, based off of my Penn Central video, some people have assumed that I have a hostile opinion towards unions, and that just isn't true. I understand and recognize that unions serve a great purpose, and historically speaking, unions are responsible for many workers, well, for example, being paid fairly, and improving overall working conditions for safety reasons. Unions have had a place to do genuine good for people over the years, and I in no way pretend like they don't. I just make fun of everybody around here. Also, there are times when the union does cause problems. No one group is entirely correct all the time. And I don't align with any one group on the political spectrum, so it's not politics here. I call out the flaws in any group, especially when it comes to historical relevance. When it comes to this situation in particular, though, I think a union was probably kind of needed, and the workers knew it. They weren't being paid enough for what they did, but they literally couldn't go on strike even if they wanted to. They'd simply be fired and replaced. So they had to get creative. There's a concept that is referred to by a few names. Sometimes people call it bothering by the book, others call it working to rule. But the basic definition of this, as it describes the act, usually as protest, of driving an entire bureaucratic system, or company, absolutely nuts, specifically by following the rules too much. Now that sounds really weird when you say it out loud, because, well, hey, the rules are in place for a reason. It's for safety and legal reasons. Everyone should be following the rules all the time. <laughs> have you ever worked anywhere? I want you to think back on previous jobs you may have had, or your friends may have had, or anywhere. How many times did you follow the rules to the letter all the time? 
The answer you're looking for is basically never. People tend to skirt around minor rules every so often in order to get jobs done faster. It's about balancing out safety and bureaucracy with actually getting work done. You often can't do both, and generally speed wins out overall. When it came to the SNCF, that was the case. The trains had to run on schedule, so there were some rules in the book that were supposed to be followed, but were often ignored. Like I said, the railway workers couldn't go on strike, they couldn't stop working, but getting creative, they thought, well, what if we just did our jobs too well? They found a very specific regulation, which stated that the engineer of any locomotive had to check at every overpass for obstructions on the tracks, and if he wasn't sure, he had to consult with the rest of the train crew. Now, obviously, that rule is completely friggin' ridiculous. There's no way any reasonable person would ever stop an entire train and check at every single bridge, every single tunnel, every time they pass under anything, they were supposed to check for obstructions, according to the rule book. but nobody actually did that, because no, 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 no. An engineer certainly keeps their eyes forward on the rails, but stopping the train when they're not told to stop by a signal or an obvious obstruction is generally an easy way to be behind schedule. And that's best case scenario. Worst case scenario, you could actually cause an accident by being stopped on the main line. Coming together in sort of an unofficial union so they couldn't officially be a union, the workers all agreed to start following this rule, specifically to the letter, all the time. The result of this decision is actually completely hilarious. The trains immediately started falling behind schedule, quite badly. And I want you to picture it. You don't even need to picture a train. Imagine you're in your car, and every time you pass under a bridge, you get out of the car, inspect the road. Hmm, is there an obstruction? I'm not sure. Let's go consult my passengers in the car to make absolutely certain there's nothing on the line. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know. The system wound up clogged and delayed horribly. The people in charge obviously wanted to know what the heck was going on, but their hands were tied because the train drivers were following the rules. They weren't doing anything wrong. They were literally doing exactly what the rule book said to do. It put the SNCF in a really awkward position because what were they going to say? Well, they couldn't actually fire anybody for following the rules. That doesn't seem correct. It was a bureaucratic nightmare to actually get the rules changed because of safety reasons. They couldn't admit that that rule was dumb and say not to do it because it was in their book. So logistically, they took the path of, well, least resistance if we're being honest. They didn't fight it. The workers got what they wanted at the time. They negotiated and came to a deal, as companies tend to do with proper unions. And as a result, the workers stopped following that rule quite as literally as they had been. The trains got back on schedule, and were fine for a few years. Like I said, France has apparently had a ton of railroad worker strikes lately, but has anyone told them to try this again? I don't know if there's any French railway workers watching this, but go over your rule book. I am legitimately curious if there's something you guys can do that could annoy the living heck out of your bosses, but they can't get mad at you, because you'd be following the rules. And with that, a special thank you goes to all my underwater train finders, Thomas Ward, Lord Captain Von Thrust III, Sumdu 267, Orange Glass, Joshua Long, Ohio Trucker 1, Royal Hudson 2860, Lord Hoth 444, Arthur Roy, Benjamin Owens, Panzer Kitson 131-232, Mr. Black Rose, Travel Typhoon, Master of None, Josh Johnson, Lock Crack and Twin Fox, Dime Blade 17, Anzac A1, and Dazzy Wazit. Till next time, this is Darkness, and a fond farewell.